<laughs> All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Soak Living Room. Thank you for those who have been online. All right. Um, we have some funny moments, <laughs> very funny moments. But hey, we're really excited to uh, start tonight. So for those of you who are new, you are watching Soak Living Room. This is uh, our living room with my family which I will introduce later, you know, and we, we are having the session that we talk about uh, the supernatural, we talk about activation, we share testimony and story, all right? So if you're in the place to really learn more about the supernatural and to grow and to move in it, this is the right place. This is the right place. Uh, we, we love to share our experience. We love to share what we know. And our heart is to really uh, equip the body of Christ to also start to walk in a lifestyle of supernatural where there are signs, wonders, and miracles. All right. So anyway, we're on a topic uh, this month. This is actually our last session for this month. So next month, we have a new topic which we will share later. All right. But um, this, uh, this month, which is today, we are having a last session of activating the power gift. All right. So uh, for those of you who missed last session, you can check it out by scrolling down our Facebook page. Or you can also uh, go to our YouTube to find uh, the archive and you can just, you know, catch up on any session that you have missed. And I know last week we talked a lot of uh, miracles, creative miracles. You know, I think we'll probably continue a bit on that later on. But I want to introduce uh, someone. Someone is looking at me right now. It's uh, fa my family. Family. My brother. Patrick. Would you like to say hi to the audience? All right, good evening, everyone. Good to see all of you tonight. Mic on, mic on. <laughs> good evening, everyone. Good to see everyone of you tonight. Um, <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> bless, bless you, brother. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, yeah, it, it, it has it has been a uh, yeah, busy time for, for all of us and uh, we Chinese New Year uh, has just been over and 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 yeah we are looking forward to what's coming in the new new month uh, and 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 this uh, the last few weeks we've, we've been uh, exploring the power gifts this is the last week we're going to talk about it and uh we yeah we are going to uh just kind of share some uh stories and also from the bible uh what power gifts uh is about uh we talked about about uh, creative uh, miracles the last week and we we'll probably talk a bit more about that tonight uh, before going to uh, to something else, uh, Pastor Jeff. Hi everyone. Um, yes, we are gonna continue on, and uh, this is gonna be the last session for the month. Yeah, so we have an uh, exciting topic that is coming up so, uh, next month. So we we'll announce it later. But uh, yeah, we're gonna continue on. We're gonna. Uh, I, we I believe in impartation to. Even testimony. Uh, in Luke chapter nine, there is a man uh, who is casting out demons, and uh, now then you have to understand. Luke chapter nine, uh, the beginning was Jesus sending out the twelve. He gave power and authority. In in his name, they will cast out demons, heal the sick, and and they went forth. And uh, it's also in Luke chapter nine that uh, the disciples encountered a man who wasn't part of the church. He was casting out demons. And I think it was John or Peter. I think it was John or something. Uh, who went to Jesus and said, Master, there was this man that is casting out demons. Like, should we stop him from doing it? Uh, <laughs> which is interesting. Like, uh, uh, I, I don't know if you are I'm a disciple and I go to a person who is like casting out demons. Sir, sir, le leave, leave the demons there. Leave the demon in the person. Like you're not part of us. Leave it to the expert. Like, <laughs> uh, see, uh, you nobody cornered the market in miracles. 
Yeah. And but the, now there, there's no we are not cornering the market for miracles because miracles is for every son and daughter of God, every child of God. Whether you believe it or not, if you don't believe it, it doesn't change that you have the power to do miracles. If you believe it, then you see the miracles. It's according to your faith be done unto you. <laughs> so that's the most important thing. And now uh, uh, even in sharing all these, we are strengthening people's faith and you know stretching people's faith. Uh, then the big question back to the disciple was like, if it's Jesus only empowered the twelve in Luke chapter nine, he empowered the seventy or the seventy-two in Luke chapter ten, verse one and two. So between nine and ten, uh, the context is nine. Chronologically, there is only twelve person that is able to cast out demon on planet Earth, which God has anointed, or Jesus has anointed. And this guy, this man, was there wasn't any name, wasn't part of the gang of the twelve. Uh, and so then my question is, how did Jesus' power and authority came to him if Jesus' power and authority is only specially for the twelve? You must have, st- I don't know how he got it. He's definitely not in the twelve, but he, would, he probably caught it when he saw something that Jesus did. Or when he saw something the disciples did, or when he heard, or maybe when he heard that, uh, or he was near the twelve and Jesus gave power and authority. I don't know, but somehow we know that this guy wasn't in the in crowd, but somehow he caught it, whether by a demonstration, whether by activation, whether by information, whether it is by observation. One of these four, he caught it, and he managed to move in it. So uh, do not underestimate what you hear because everything you hear has a uh, ability to impart something to you in the spirit. So I just want to encourage you guys for that. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, I mean, Jeff just shared one of my um, favorite chapters to preach. I actually mm-hmm. preached from uh, Luke 9, 10, 11. And, mm-hmm. and I agree. I feel the supernatural is caught. Mm-hmm. All right. I just want to start preaching that first just to get, give some mm-hmm. context, you know. I mean, Luke uh, chapter 9, we see the 12 disciples. Uh, Luke chapter 10 was the 60 that was sent out. So it, it, it multiplied. And, you know, uh, the instruction that Jesus gave the 12 and the 60 was very specific. You know, they say, mm. oh, 70, sorry, 70, uh, like go heal the sick, cast out demon, preach the gospel. All right. So, so the instruction was really clear. All right. So it's like go heal the sick and preach the kingdom. Heal the sick, preach the kingdom, you know. And, and you see, one interesting thing is this. Uh, when we read Luke uh, 11, so it's 9 is a 12, 10 is a 70, and 11. At the starting of 11, you know, um, the disciple came to Jesus and said, uh, uh, Jesus, teach us how to pray as how John the Baptist teach his disciple to pray. And, and my, my question to everyone when I'm, when I'm going through this passage is this. So maybe we can assume that before Luke 11, Jesus haven't teach about prayer yet. Jesus never teach them how to pray. And now the disciples say like, hey, John the Baptist actually teach his disciple to pray. Can you teach us how to pray just like how John has taught his disciple? So my question is, is how did they heal the sick, cast demon out without a prayer model? All right? Jesus never teach them how to pray, but they were, you know, casting demon, they were healing the sick, they were preaching gospel, they were harvest, there were a lot of fruits. I mean, I like to propose, you know, I, I actually believe, you know, even though Jesus didn't teach a prayer model on how to do science and wonder, but I believe all these disciples, you need to know, when Jesus healed the sick, it wasn't in a closed door. <laughs> you know, he didn't say, okay, get a person into the room, close the door, I will heal the sick. He do it in the public. He do it in the open, which means a lot of people have witnessed how the miracle take place, you know? And I just, I'm just thinking, maybe the disciple was, was you know, when, when Jesus asked the 12 disciples to do the works of what he did, you know, <laughs> and, 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 you know, many disciples w- was panicking. And sometimes, you know, when you panic, you might lose a balance, you know. <laughs> and, and their panic is like, oh, oh dear, it's our turn to go heal the sick right now, you know. But how do we do it, you know. And maybe, you know, maybe the smart one, maybe John, John, John might say, John, uh, the beloved, he might say, oh, you know what? We don't know what to do, but never mind. We have observed what Jesus has done over the weeks and months. Let's just follow what he did. 
I saw him putting his hand on the leprosy and the leprosy left. I saw him putting his hand on the blind, on their eyes, and the eyes opened. You know? So, so I like to encourage, you know, I, this is what I believe. You know, the, the disciple actually start moving in signs of wonder, not through, not through a prayer model, which I feel that sometimes we are looking for a prayer model. Ah, Pastor Jeff, can you teach me how to pray so the demons can flee? Mm. Oh, Pastor Patrick, how to pray so the sickness will leave? You know, we need to know, you know, um, this is what I always say. Uh, Science, Wonders, America is not about a prayer model. It is about a role model. And his name is Jesus. Yeah. When we start to look at the life of Jesus, when we start to study Jesus, when we understand why he, he does the thing he does, well, that's where we catch his heart. Because a lot of time, I think when we want to move in a supernatural, we, we fail to catch God's heart about the supernatural. We start to catch about the, the theology or the principle. We start to value principle more than the heart. You know? We got a principle, but we miss the prince. The prince is Jesus. You know? So I just want to encourage you, you know, as, as we share, you know, we've been doing soap living room for like maybe almost a year soon. You know, and, and our, our heart is to really for people to, to catch it. You know, the more like at time maybe Jeff sharing something. You know, my job is not to like wow another story, but I will listen intently. At the same time, I will listen with the spirit. You know, like okay, wow, what what is there? You know, how to catch it? You know, and the same thing when Patrick shared that me, I'll be like wow, wow, what what is behind the heart? Why is God's heart in it? Why did Patrick do that? Why did Patrick put his hand on this? Uh, old lady, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> what if I do It's a bad example, you know? but, but every time, every time when I hear people's testimony and story, I try to catch the heart behind it, <laughs> I try to catch the heart behind it, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> no beautiful, no beautiful boy. <laughs> oh no, no, no. no. <laughs> All right. So, oh. but anyway, you know, since since Patrick is very excited to take over. Wait, let, let me let me. Oh yeah, go for like, it. Uh, um, there, there's something that uh, in Luke ten, there's a valuable lesson there. Uh, mm. You want to know why we don't see a lot of miracles in the church? But I I think that is one of the answers, not the main answer, but uh. Uh, Jesus gave a very simple four-step instructions to the 72 or 70 followers, depending on whether you're NIV or uh, the rest of the translations. <laughs> Not included version. No, sorry. <laughs> uh, and, and so um, he, he says, uh, if you go to any house, he say peace be under this house. That means release peace, blessing, peace. And if your peace says there, and they invite you in, eat whatever is placed in front of you. That's number one. Uh, you bless the house, you release peace, blessing over the house. Uh, whether it's prayer walking or blessing. Then if they, uh, you, they uh, uh, kind of invite you in, you enter in, you s- they say eat whatever is placed in front of you. Uh, if it's a third world country, don't ask what the food is, don't ask. Never ask what is the food in front of you. Just treat everything as chicken or pork. Don't ask the animal. I try asking before, then you really don't want to eat what is placed in front of you. So the rule is fellowship, right? Fellowship, like pray, blessing, prayer, release blessing to the house, fellowship, fellowship. Then it says uh, lay hands on the sick, right? Lay hands on the sick, then ministry. Ministry, lay hands on the sick, pray for the needs, release presence, pray for the needs, or whatever they need. God for a supernatural encounter, they encounter Jesus. Number four, then tell them that the kingdom of God is at hand. It's here, right? So, uh, so the number four is preach to them the gospel, right? So, but the, the problem is we, we, we reverse it. We, we, we reverse it. We 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 bring people to the church, then we preach to them the gospel, then we pray for the need, we pray for healing. Then we say, okay, "Oh, I got healed." They say, "Okay, no mind." Then we come and so then we have a fellowship group in your house, right? Fellowship group in your house. Then we well, and we have fellowship in your house as a group. Then we pray for the peace of the house to bless the house. We we <laughs> somehow we reverse the cycle. 
and the 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 modern day evangelism is not going to work very well in COVID times because you can't bring a lot of people to church. That model needs to be reversed back to Luke chapter ten, the way it is. Go from house to house. You know what? You are not breaking any social uh, uh, rules if it's like gathering of like that's eight or less. No, so you can do that. So something about how we do evangelism need to go back into the book of Acts, uh, so the, the book of Luke in chapter ten. There's something there that uh, the problem is not the, th- the thing is not bringing people to the gathering is actually going there to be to gather with them and speak peace and to to bless the people and and and, and we we were never taught our people how to do it. So the main evangelism strategy is bring people to church. How are you going to do that now? How are you going to do that? You can't. So I would really encourage every leader that is... Uh, there are these three leaders in that you are watching now. And one of you is from India. And I know it. And you have two different churches, uh, two different body of Christ that you kind of work with. Uh, and and I, I felt like this is really for you, you guys. To, it's time to go house to house. Yeah, and you have a two-story building, and you get on the second story, and I, I think uh, s- someone would know who I'm addressing to, but uh, God is ask asking you to change, shift the strategy because it's time for people movement, P- people moving people. So I uh, just want to encourage that whoever it is, uh, you c- you can comment if it means something to you. If not, it's all right. Uh, Patrick. Okay, praise the Lord. Um, since we are on Luke chapter uh, 9 and 10, okay, I'll just talk from there. And uh, just want to quote the verse again, Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Uh, Jesus called his 12 disciples together, gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. So uh, here, Jesus... Uh, calls his disciples together and, and gives them power and authority over two categories. So it's two categories. Uh, to cast out demons, which is the realm of the supernatural, giving them power and authority over the supernatural, and to cure diseases, giving power and authority over the natural. And, and so uh, exercising the power gives is really, it's really about exercising authority. The exercising the authority of God invested in you and that when you exercise uh, authority over uh, the realm of supernatural and the realm of the natural, power is released. Power is... Am, uh, am I... Is there sound? Is there yes, no there, sound? There's there there sound. Yes, yeah. Power is to... Re- it is... It is is released uh, to to work miracles and to set the captives free. So so power gives uh, you know one key element about power gives is about exercising authority. You cannot exercise authority without knowing who you ha- who you are in Christ and what you have in Christ. Exercising. Uh, 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 moving and the power gives the one very key element is about knowing who you are and what you have in Christ the power and authority that he has he has invested in you and so when th- when they came back let me try to find it I think it's chapter 10. Chapter 10, 30 something, I think. Chapter 10. Man, I, I, I saw it just now. The part about uh, they came back and they were so Even excited. Even the demons submitted and tell from the Yes, demon. yes, yes, yes. It's 10. Uh, I, c- I can look for you. You can carry on. <laughs> I will look for you. All right, so, um, man. Uh, Okay. 
Uh, Luke chapter 10 verse 17. Luke chap okay, Luke chapter 10 verse 17. One seven, yeah. All right. Okay, Luke chapter 10 verse 17, the 70 uh came back returning with joy after they went for mission trip, they went to the different villages healing the sick. Uh, casting out demons, they came back to, to Jesus and they said, uh, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. That when we cast out uh, the demons in your name, that they obey, they submit. And, and Jesus says in verse 18, he, he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And then he says in verse 19, Behold, I give you the authority to trample serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing sh shall, by, shall any means hurt you. Uh, this, for me, this is very interesting, all right? Uh, because this reminds me really of uh, um, Mark chapter 16. When in Mark ch chapter 16, verse 17 and 18, it says, okay, let me turn to that. Mark chapter 16, verse 17. Uh, it says, And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will pick, take, take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Uh, it's very interesting because, because in Mark chapter uh, 10, 17, Jesus, Jesus talks about, um, uh, yeah, I've given you power and authority over all scorpions and serpents, and they can't hurt you. And down here, uh, in verse, in, in Mark 16, 17 and 18, it says, also you shall cast out demons, this is Jesus saying, and you shall take out serpents, and, <laughs> and, and, and they can't hurt you. Um, now, I, I do believe, and I mean, when most people read M Mark six, uh, 16, uh, verse 18, the, when Jesus says, take up serpents, it is physical serpents. All right? But when Jesus talked about serpents in Mark chapter 10, the serpents and scorpions are spiritual serpents. Serpents and scorpions, right? So there's a parallel down here. It, it, in both places, Mark, uh, Luke chapter 10 and Mark chapter 16, Jesus talked about, I give you power and authority to cast out demons. But in, in Luke chapter 10, when Jesus says, you will have power and authority over every scorpion and serpent, he's, he's talking about uh, spiritual scorpion and serpents. Right, uh, but when he goes to Mark chapter sixteen, verse eighteen, where he talks about uh, about you shall take up serpents. Uh, I mean, virtually everyone interprets it as real serpents, right? And in in fact, th of course, there's this account where. Uh, uh, where Paul was was like shipwrecked on this island, yeah, and he was bitten by a serpent, and he took, and 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 he took the serpent and threw it away, yeah, and and wh when the the people around him saw that he was bitten by serpents, th at first they were they were saying, oh, he must be such a terrible sinner. Be God God sent a serpent to judge him, you know, to bite him, to kill him. But when they, they saw him take the serpent up and threw it away and he did not die, but he was, uh, he looked fine. Uh, they had a 180 degree change. And, 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 and they, and, and they, they, all of a sudden, they think that oh, this 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 guy 
es uh, uh, this guy is a god right uh, and, and they and that's crazy because th that's that's the that's the fickleness of public opinion yeah one minute they think that you you, you are a sinner you are a murderer no Next minute, they think you are God. Now you so, but but Paul did not care about what they thought at all. Yeah. The fact is now in ministry, public opinion is 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 fickle like the 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 waves of the sea. Yeah. One one minute you are loved, one minute you are hated. Yeah, if you if if you try to live your your life pleasing people, right? Yeah, it <laughs> it, it you end up a shipwreck. Uh, but but Paul 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 didn't care about what they thought. Yeah. But that's the display of the 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 authority over nature that that Paul had. That was Mark chapter 16, uh, verse 17 and 18, lived out in Paul when he, he was shipwrecked in the island of Malta. That, that, that serpent bit, bit him, he didn't die, he took the serpent through the way. And uh, we, have, we have stories like that, like, uh, like Jeff, you, 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 you have stories like that, right? Like, uh, <laughs> like, like Mark Gerpert, you want to share that horse Which poison one? story? Horse poison. poison story. Oh, oh, that one. Uh, yeah, you share that, then I continue. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, that's this one in Nepal. Uh, my pastor and uh, there's another guy. His name is Dan. Dan Ecker. I mean, some of you would know him. Uh, they were in Nepal and they were uh, back in those days. Nepal then wasn't Nepal now. Like even now, it's still very spiritual. But back then, it's like a, it's a, it's like a circus. And so uh, they actually went up to the mountains to preach the gospel, and they went into this village, and uh, and they the village welcomed them. So they slept there. They the village fed them rice and other dishes and stuff. They ate. They slept. They woke up the next day, and uh, saw the whole the whole town, the whole village actually. Sorry, the whole village was gathering around their hut, and uh, and so there was this man that knocked on the door, and. Uh, Mark kind of answered like, uh, well, "What what happened?" He says, "Well, uh, we want to know your God." Uh, and he says, "Why?" Oh, well, <laughs> that's because we put enough poison inside the rice to kill a horse, and you are still alive. That means your God is bigger than mine. Right? <laughs> so, well, that goes the salvation of the whole village. <laughs> like, that's yeah, that's. Right. Yeah. That is that the poison story? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's okay. amazing, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And 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 so if you you know who you are and and what you have, you uh you carry the power of God and the protection of God surren uh, surrounds you. Yeah. That when you are in His presence. W when His you are in His presence. His power is in you. And when you are in His presence, you are in His protection. Um, and, and, and so, uh, let's reverse a bit. Yeah, so, uh, we, are, we are saying, Jesus talked about serpents, uh, and he w in Mark chapter 10, He was, Referring to exercising authority over uh, s the supernatural, over s the supernatural realm, over demons. When he talk about serpents, <laughs> but when he talk about serpents in Mark chapter uh, sixteen, he's talking about exercising authority over nature, over creation, over the natural. And and so the power gifts is really exercising authority. That is one of the main gist of 
what the power, t- uh, power give is about. It's about exercising authority over different realms, over different areas. In the realm of supernatural, in the realm of the natural. Exercising uh, authority o- over demons, exercising authority over animals, over nature, exercising authority over the weather, exercising authority uh, yeah, over disease, exercising authority yeah, over impossible situations. It's all about exercising authority. Mm. So th- really, so to keep things very, very simple, moving in the power gifts is just about exercising authority. Mm. All right. <laughs> all right. Thank, th- th- thank you, Patrick. Uh, I, I really love how you summarize it into so simple. You see, wh- one of the things that I've been meditating on this week is this, we all know who Christ is, but do we know who we are in Christ? I'll say that one more time. We all know who Christ is, but do we know who we are in Christ? And I, I feel like when you know who you are in Christ, you know, the things that you can do, you know, like what Patrick say, it is just going to be like normal it's just going to be your lifestyle because when you know who you are then you know what authority you can exercise you see it 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 all comes back to really knowing who we belong to what's our identity and what's our inheritance you know and i think these are things that we actually have really went into details in our um past sessions you know and i just want to encourage you know like Activating the power gift is not looking at trying to operate a machinery that you don't have. <laughs> you know, it's not like, oh, I'm trying to operate something, but I don't have it. No, o- operating in the power gift is actually understanding what is already inside of you. And I, I thought that Patrick gave a really good key. It's really exci- exercising authority. You know, exercising authority. I remember like, uh, Last week we talked about creative miracle, and one of the things that we we talk about is uh, like people who have foreign objects, like maybe screwdriver, metal, or nails or pins uh, inside their body, and they either disappear supernaturally because I I've seen so many cases where after receive prayer, you know they went back to the doctor and the doctor do a X ray or a CT scan and they couldn't really find the matter, you know, and in some cases the matter is still there, but their ring, range of motion become really flexible. So I don't know, maybe the, the metal becomes some rubber. I, I, I really don't know what happened to it. But you see, it is really, if you ask me how I pray to see those things happen, I don't think I have a special prayer, but I feel like when we are praying, we're actually exercising authority. We're exercising authority over all this foreign object we want them to leave. We're exercising authority over cancer. We're exercising authority over tumors. You know, when we exercise, they have to bow down to the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. You know, and 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 uh, sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> so I, I I once had uh, I mean one one, uh, one of the one healing minister that I really respect a lot is actually Yen and Drew. He's quite quite a pioneer, and. <laughs> one time I asked him this, you know, I'm still new in ministry, I asked him this question like, uh, oh, Yen, you saw so many creative miracles, you saw so many interesting things that happened. Can, can you teach me how to, how do you operate in, um, um, how do you operate in healing and how do you operate in the uh, gift of miracles? And also I, I was trying to be very technical and I thought like, okay, maybe if I ask him to tell me a formula or what. And he looked at me and said, say like, Clement, just lay hand and pray. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. Don't, don't get too hung up, you know, whether you are operating in the gift of healing or you're operating in the gift of miracle. Don't get too hung up with that because God knows what the person need. When you lay hand and you pray, God knows what the person need and God will operate the right gift if, if necessary so that person can receive the miracle. And when I heard that, I was like, wow. It kind of set me free. Because uh, in my early days of ministry, I'm a very technical guy, you know. I was like, okay, you know, if there's a way to, you know, tap into a certain thing, then I need to do it. So to get to see a greater breakthrough or whatever, you know. 
and and and, and so so that 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 conversation with Ian Andrew like really changed my mind, you know. And a lot of times when I see interesting like miracle things, you know, it is not because I start operating a different gift. <laughs> you know, but it's actually just me being obedient. A lot of time we are looking for the gift of healing, we're looking for the gift of miracle, we're looking for the gift of prophecy, but we don't embrace the gift of obedience. Come on. The gift of obedience is something that we all have and we all can operate in. And I actually believe that a lot of times when we start to step into obedience, a lot of things will start to align. A lot of things will start to happen. You know, one, 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 one of the things that I, 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 I shared uh, before is this, like, you know, uh, let's, say, uh, let's say Patrick, you know, Patrick is in the mission field and suddenly someone dropped dead, you know, and Patrick is like, oh, what should I do? You know, and Patrick cannot say like, oh, you know what? I don't have the gift of raising the dead. So I'm not going to pray for pray, pray to raise the dead. I'm just going to call for help. <laughs> or maybe I need to go to a conference or look for someone who has seen the dead raised to ask them to pray for impartation. You know, oh, I need to look for uh, David Hogan. You know, to lay hands on me because David Hogan's seen a lot of dead raised. You know, but no, you know, that, that's, not, that's not the right approach. But rather Patrick would be like, you know what? I have all it takes. I'm going to exercise authority. I'm going to lay hand. I'm going to step into obedience to what the scriptures say that we can do all these things, like what Mark 16, or us talk about it. You know, we can just step into it when we obey. So I just want to encourage people, like, you know, like the, the gift of obedience is something that you already have. <laughs> just that you want to turn it on or off or not. You know? And and that, that itself, that obedience will not only accelerate your journey in seeing miracles, but also accelerate mm. your journey in getting to your calling and destiny. Yes, Patrick. So, um, so Pastor Clement, I, I really love this phrase, gift of obedience. May I know which, which, uh, it's not in the Bible. Oh which book, no. which chapter, oh which no. verse? <laughs> it's not in the Bible, you know, but, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm looking obedience at is better than sacrifice. <laughs> in sacrifice, you give a gift. But in God, we give obedience. Yeah. So, so, um, <laughs> but I, I, so I, I love this phrase, the gift of obedience. Although it does not, uh, it does not appear in the Bible. What I would suggest is this: the gift of faith is God's gift to you. The gift of obedience is your gift to God. Wow, mm. wow. Okay, we can wow. end off ready. We can end off ready. Sorry. Wow. It's trying to hijack right. my 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 my, my like spotlight. Some, <laughs> that's, that's like some <laughs> word of wisdom. Yeah, he's just operating in a word of wisdom. Some hashtag tweetable statement. <laughs> <laughs> but <Amazing>. anyway, <laughs> but I think I just want to kind of summarize before I pass to Jeff. You know, it's 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 like when we read the the Bible, the Bible says you can do this list of things. Do we believe it? Do we obey? You know? Because when it comes to healing, the Bible says that when you lay hand on the sick, the sick will recover. So our first job is actually to lay hand. And the moment we lay hand, we are actually obeying the word of the Lord that releases faith for the miracles to happen. Mm. You know? When, 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 when the Bible talks, there are so many scriptures about prophesying, prophecy, word of knowledge, you know? When you obey and the word of God said that, wow, I can prophesy and I start to open my mouth and allow God to fill my mouth with His words. That's prophecy. Do you realize almost every supernatural manifestation of God starts with obedience? Even Moses parting the Red Sea is an act of obedience. If you look through all the different encounters in the Bible, a lot of weird supernatural encounters, you know, like, or you, uh, you throw the stick, the axe will float up. I mean, you know, prophetic axe, all these things. There is always that obedience. Or you can even see, I mean, uh, just off my mind, like even Naaman dipping into the river. It's also obedience, even though there's reluctance, you know, in the story. Mm. You know? But I just, I just want to emphasize obedience to the word of the Lord is something that's really beautiful, but yet it is something that we often overlook that we stop looking at the obedience that we can operate and we can move in and we start looking at formula, model, 
templates, things that we can control, things that we feel that because of you know step one, step two, step three, then we see a result. We actually have more faith in those things that we have more faith in Christ in us, the hope of glory. We have we have more faith in those things than than the obedience that when we step in it, that God is a big God. The moment I obey, the moment I step into it, God's going to show up. Mm. So so I just want to bring a different anger, you know, like how would your obedience today lead to someone's salvation? How would your obedience today lead to someone encountering God? How would your obedience today get someone healed? The list goes on, you know, because I struggle with that, you know, and I, I, I and and I'm, I know Jeff also has his own story. I mean, there are moments where God says, go release this word, go pray for this person. I have always an internal struggle. Oh no, that's not from the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> that's not from the Lord. That's probably from the enemy or what. You know, I don't know that person, man. What if I pray, nothing happened? You know, I always have that in, internal struggle, internal dialogue, and telling myself like, that, that's probably not from the Lord. And I, I, I do have my own struggle with that in the past. So I, I do understand. But the moment I obey, because some, you need to know, when we step into obedience, it sometimes makes you look like a fool. It can sometimes make you look like a fool. But now, would you rather be a fool for the Lord? <laughs> because a lot of times when, you, when we are willing to risk it to be a fool for the Lord, thinking that it might backfire, but actually God's going to show up. Amen? Okay, I, I'm like preaching ready, so I'll pass to Jeff. Amen. That's good. Uh, I realize there's two of you that actually responded to the word for India and I assume Elizabeth and there's one more person and uh, I, I can't see him anymore. Uh, so let me give you a bit more details. Okay, uh, I can't find your name anymore. The, uh, I know one of it is Elizabeth. He, Bishop Himo, right? Himo Prasad there. Okay, so uh, two-story building, second story. Uh, there's another area. There's a one-story building, and I don't know whether uh, there's this word uh, something Pradesh, uh, Andhra Pradesh or something. So I think there's a place, and then I saw a god of the sea, uh, a god of the guardian of the sea. Like a, it's, a, it's like a god. Uh, if Varuma Varuna means something. And so, and it's very near your church. There's, uh, I don't know whether it's a temple or whatever it is, uh, uh, but uh, I assume that it's very near the sea, that uh, uh, that's where your town is. And if that makes sense to you, respond. There, there's, a, there's this temple that is, uh, like it's facing a sea, and it's like a guardian of the sea or something, and it's facing a sea. It's probably God of the sea or something that's very nearby you. If, if that makes sense, then that's you. Uh, message like uh, command there. Where else? Uh, I will see the command. I I'm gonna just going to continue on the lesson first. Uh, well, that's obedience also, right? I mean, uh, uh, it, it is true. Um, so, so we need to understand that um, Jesus, you see, when we connect the supernatural, right? Um, we need to understand that uh, Jesus said, if you say to this, Mountain, be down, we move. So the goal of so the supernatural and in nature and stuff, right, is to see nature as part of something that's under Jesus. Yeah. So, uh, pause, Elizabeth, is that where you're staying, in Pradesh? And there's a god of the sea temple that is south of you. Does it make sense? If that is you, then Yep. Okay. Good. Good. So, uh, and, and there, there is an expansion on the second floor. That there are some renovations that have not been done yet properly, and part of it is kind of like not really totally done, not run down either. But I saw like white paint and coat of paint, and I felt like God is saying that He's going to renew and He's going to restore that place. Yeah. And I, I think part of it is a drink corner at the side. If you go to the second floor, uh, uh, there's this place where you make coffee and uh, at the side that is uh, probably behind on the left side. Yeah, yeah, behind that is on the uh, left side if I'm facing the 
crowd will be on the left side. And there's the, the, uh, I don't know whether that the you need funds or whatever it is for renovation for the place or whether you need funds for the place. Uh, it's something like a stream or river or something. I don't know what it's called. Yeah. Uh, and I uh, keep seeing like a river. Yeah. Uh, on the, like a, a river logo or something. Yeah. If it makes sense. Uh, and it's kind of like a, not totally round, but like an oval, like, yeah. And so um, God is going to renew, whether there's a renewal or the contract or the place, whatever it is, there is new things that he want to set up for you, Elizabeth. And I want you to know that. I want you to bring it to the leaders and I want them to hear the word that uh, God has called five of them to rise up, yeah. Two men, three women. Yeah, they are there. They are in a group. And I see this taller man, uh, mustache guy, um, and 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 so Lord, we thank you. We are going to speak the generation of leaders that's going to rise up in the name of Jesus. That you guys will have more than enough. So Elizabeth, that's for you. Let your leaders listen to it. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, back to the lesson. Um, it says, "Say to this mountain, be thou removed." Uh, there's something distinct that God, God, Jesus is saying that we are supposed to tell our problems to go, not rather than tell God about our problems. I mean, you can talk to God about your problems, that's, that's okay. That, that, that's all right. You know, but uh, if, now you have to understand uh, that there's this, uh, there's this survey, pu uh, Puri survey that actually kind of did a survey around uh, 80%, they say 80% of evangelical Christian doesn't pray more than 10 minutes a day. Now, when I say prayer, right, I do not mean, oh my God, my car is skidding. Help me, Lord. That's not counted. <laughs> your, your, thank you, Lord, for the food, not counted. Good Lord morning, it's not counted. Uh, those are not prayer. And the, the thing is, uh, a, a lot of us, we, we have a prayer life problem. We don't talk to God. Every time we talk to God, it's talking to God about our problems. How, how, how much of that is your prayer life? If basically talking to God is talking, if you talk to God, it's about your problems, that's not a prayer life. Uh, and if you keep on telling your problems to your girlfriend, uh, eventually she will leave you. Like <laughs> it's true. There's no way to build a relationship. It's, that's, that's true. Uh, and by the way, if you are not talking to the Father, don't talk to the prophet about what God is telling you. Yeah? Just for your information, if you're not talking to the Father, you, I, the prophet ain't got a word for you. So t don't outsource your prayer life. But in this, Jesus is not even talking about prayer life. He's actually talking about your authority and power and authority of understanding what is under you. Understanding that creation obeys a person who is in Christ and understand that what Christ told them, if you say to this mountain, be thou removed, you will be cast into the sea. What Jesus is saying, he, he gives you the playing field, the level playing field, that you are on top and they are below. He's giving you the playing field to this place where you are talking down, not talking up. When you talk down to a person, you understand, right? When you talk down to a person, it means that they are under you. That's what Jesus is saying. Like if you say unto this mountain, be thou removed, right? There is a very dis there's a distinction between you and your creation. There's a distinction between you and a storm. There's a distinction between you and the mountains. Because you are a child of God and your father is the creator and therefore you are creative. Therefore, if you are a child of God, you have the right and ability to exercise your authority over nature. That is something that is very, uh, that there's something that we don't talk about a lot, but in the places that we, are, we go, like we have storms, we have uh, droughts that we need to command whether to come and whether to go. Yeah, and of course in Singapore, like if it rains, I uh, don't need got umbrella, that's it's all right. Everywhere is aircon, it's okay. I just take shower curve for a half an hour and everything is going to be fine. So we don't think about all these things, right? But in the mission field in third world countries, like if it rains, it rains, it floods. Singapore, you hardly see any flood, yeah? The flood, yeah, you don't, we don't have flood, we have swimming pools. <laughs> and so we don't have that kind of thing. And so when we talk about commanding authority over weather, over all these things, right? 
uh, we don't ask a lot because we don't encounter a lot. But if you go to Philippines, the typhoons, you go to Thailand, the droughts, and, and those are the places where they've seen a lot of these things. And you shouldn't ask the question, why doesn't it happen in Singapore? Because in Singapore, there's no need to. Oh, umbrella. Yeah, shelter is everywhere. You know, it's not like you're in the middle of a field, like 20 kilometers, it's all field and it rains. You better have a prayer of faith, <laughs> right? So, uh, and yeah, we we're going to probably dive into I, I have this. to say that I've got quite a few experiences uh, mm. previously of asking God to stop the rain. And um, it, it the rain stopped. Yeah, uh, might not be very big stuff, right? So, like, one time, I think I was still a teenager, yeah. And I was at Andrew's house. We were still, like, maybe teenagers or JC, you know? Yeah, JC. Young uh, Patrick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, then uh, her mom was, like, going to throw a party at the pool side. And, like, it was about to, it was, like, raining. The party supposed to, I think, start six or something. So we prayed, and the rain stopped. And that time, I think we were in our twenties, and uh, also Andrew. Um, uh, so we, we we were doing a <laughs> uh, evangelistic youth camp, and it was a big camp, uh, over a hundred people. Yeah, and we we were having the camp at. Um <laughs> Uh, ACS Anglo Chinese uh, School at Barker Road, and uh, that time was before uh, years ago. Before they they renovated the whole school, so they they still had a big f football field, and and so we we had um uh event where there was there was going to be a f uh campfire, and 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 that event was like that's a we actually going to have a skit, right? Where and the skit was like Elijah calling down fire, and then the fire come down from from the top of the the hill, like you know, like it will come down, like and hit the you know the 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 campfire, which is re really huge. It's like huge, uh, a lot of wood, like. Stacked up very high, so it was was really a big thing, right? <laughs> and and the whole like like it was during the afternoon, it started to rain, right? And so so uh, or I can't remember. It's like the 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 whole the whole weather was very bad, and so we we, had, we, we were praying and exercising authority, and and, and so by the time six o'clock when when we had to like. <laughs> Uh, prepare the the event. Uh, there was no more rain, and I remember many. M yeah, I just remember there are just these moments like this, <laughs> where uh, in faith we exercise authority over the weather, and 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 just uh, God God stopped the rain. Yeah. Mm. I. I have an earthquake one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I share this uh, publicly. I got an earthquake one. Uh, there's one earthquake that I couldn't avoid that was in Aceh, then there's another earthquake that happened. Uh, okay, this is. <laughs> I don't know whether this is over nature or whatever it is, but it's interesting. Like, uh, So I can't tell the country because it's kind of like a closed country and it's very sensitive. Uh, we went to this country and uh, somehow we got connected to kind of like a we end up meeting a, a royalty in in the in the country. Yeah. Uh, long story short, uh, we have dinner together, and uh, I kind of like prayed for her. Uh, she. Uh, got filled with the Holy Spirit. She got born again. She got filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, and she told us something very interesting. Uh, she, uh, that she she has this very unique kind of uh, 
idols that is really blessed by the highest spiritual authority in the kingdom. Uh, yeah, so these are not your usual idols. These are like hundreds of thousands of dollars kind of thing. And uh, and she kind of asked, like, what, what do I do with these now? Like, since I believe in Jesus, I said, oh, uh, and uh, I said, not knowing, I, I could I could see in the spirit. So uh, I know that it's not good news for her. Like I can, like it's it's not your usual idols. Uh, there's a lot of very unusual witchcraft involved uh, in it. Where when we want to clear, uh, uh, the the, na- the neighborhood dogs went berserk, like <laughs> berserk. And so we we took all three of them. Uh, we took all three of them and uh, we, we went back. Uh, now you have to understand these are somehow connected to the highest visual authority in the country. And uh, we, we prayed, we bind it, we broke it. Uh, we broke it. Like, uh, and uh, we felt a release and uh, uh, we flew back the next day. Uh, we flew back the next day. And immediately when I landed, uh, the pastor actually texted me and says, Pastor Jeff, something actually happened. Like, remember we did this? He said, yeah. Uh, what? I, I know that we broke something in the nation. Uh, and an earthquake actually happened. When you let an earthquake happened. Now, this is not an unusual thing. The earthquake happened, I think it was 5.5 or something? 5 or 5.5. Five five. Uh, the only build, the only buildings that were destroyed, uh, according to the newspaper, were seventy places. Uh, all, all seventy places was worshiping this idol. <laughs> all the only buildings that were destroyed are places of worship, and it's all connected to the same idol. Uh, and <laughs> he, he says, what, what, is, what, what, what is happening? Is it is God judging? God? No, 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 it's God. It's something is broken in your nation. That earthquake is the one that, that well, once again, I will shake the heavens and the earth. That everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Everything that cannot be shaken will stand. And the everlasting kingdom is coming. That the, the, the church will stand, that the, the, this earthquake is spiritual in this place where he's shaking those things that never meant to be there in the first place. Why I remember this story is because this, and know that something shaped in the nation, this country is now in the headlines now because the regime is going to fall. <laughs> so I'm not going to share which one, but you all can think about it. But uh, I, I don't know whether that's like authority over nature, but <laughs> but technically that is that is God making a statement over something that was broken in the spiritual atmosphere, and bam, or something is shifting in the nation. Just want to let you know. <laughs> I don't know how to continue to this, but is there authority over nature? I, you know, I, I don't know. Like, better, uh, well, Pastor Patrick, <laughs> Pastor Patrick, let me answer the question. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I neither do I. Like, but uh, we we want the cause of it. It's just we broke something and something happened. <sighs> yep. Yeah. So, uh, here's the thing. Everything is connected. Uh, the spirit realm and the natural realm they're all connected and so sometimes when you pray over something exercise authority over something it shifts and then there is uh, yeah it then there there is a connecting effect and other things shifts as well Mm. yeah and so this uh, yeah so I'll explain it that way. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Yeah. And like for me, when I do inner healing with people, what happens is most of the time I just deal with people's emotions. Like I I help people clear uh, trauma and toxic emotions from 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 their 
uh, from their hearts and from their bodies from and also break lies. And what happens is very interesting because people come back to me uh, and they report breakthrough in their, in their uh, some, sometimes in their health, sometimes in their relationships, sometimes in their finances. Uh, and I don't necessarily, sometimes I did not deal with like financial issues, but they just get breakthrough, like crazy breakthrough in their finan finances. And it because it's just all connected, yeah. And so when you exercise authority in uh, over something, sometimes yeah, you can s you can see breakthrough in uh, in uh, in random things. Yeah. 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 So 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 I guess Patrick, you know, the key thing I'm hearing is that we also need to emphasize that like um, it's not random things; it's all connected. Uh, somehow just that we can't. It really looks random. random. Mm. Okay. Yeah. 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 But it's actually all connected. Yeah. yeah. I feel like, I, I just thought like another analogy is just like us, we are spirit, soul, and body. You know, mm. we are all interconnected, you know, spirit, soul, body. And when when we don't take care of one, the other are affected. Mm. You know, mm. if we don't take care of our health, we'll become sick. Mm. And when we're sick, it actually affects our emotional welfare, right. our emotional state, you know. Or sometimes, you know, if people are in a prolonged season of maybe depression, or maybe other emotional um, uh, state, you know, it does affect the health too. Mm. You know, I know studies has also shown that actually stress do affect the health. Yeah. You know, so so I think a, a good way to just to add on to where where you're coming from is that like you know even for us spirit soul body, you know, uh, it's interconnected. You know, we we might not fully get to the details of how it's connected. You know, because this is not like a science thing where you can break it down to the very micro level to like fully understand it, but definitely uh, there's a link, uh, there's a connection. I mean, even uh, even Paul say, you know, I, I wish that you prosper, not but also your soul prosper. Huh? So, so would you want to add on something since you are, you, that's your realm, inner healing. Uh, but we're not talking about inner yeah, healing. No, no. <laughs> but one thing I want to say that uh, none of us, right, go around uh, trying to ch chat a uh, light. We are not demon hunting. Mm. Like we don't look for Ghostbusters. We don't look for like demons to tear down, strongholds to tear down. <laughs> like uh, <laughs> on, uh yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like like we don't like we don't go and look for principles to Principalities to bind, yeah, yeah. So, so you know, yeah. So that is not our focus, mm. yeah. That's not how we do things. I, correct, correct. Yeah, that's not how we exercise authority. Wow, I need to bind the the principality of Gasuism. <laughs> what uh, is that? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, may, 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 maybe they not everyone do, will get it. No, not everyone will get it. The spirit uh, of FOMO, maybe. <laughs> they are missing. Uh, yeah, whatever, you know. How <laughs> <laughs> oh, you formal spirit forming in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I, I mean, I, I agree with you, Patrick. Yeah. You know? like, like, I mean, our, our, our um, perspective is we, we don't, we are not demon hunters. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> you know, that's not our like, full-time job. Like we walk down the street of Singapore, like, all right, Jeff, can you feel it? There's a demon around the corner. Let's go cast it out. Yeah. You know, or like, oh, Patrick, wow, can you feel when a lady come in, I can sense a demon. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like that's, that's not our mode of operation, you know, but yeah. uh, I think what we do is when we see someone manifesting, when we see a demon do short, we will shoot them. <laughs> you know, we, we, we don't specifically like, that's, that's our job scope. We, we, we hunt for it. You know, but sometimes things happen because we're in socability, you know, yeah. like in our, in, in our atmosphere, we, we do value the presence of God. And when people come into the presence of God, things happen, mm -hmm. you know. And I mean, just for, just my first deliverance I ever seen was with Jeff. And that was a funny story, you know, uh, we didn't get to share, I think last week, you know. And, and I kid you not, like, like I mean, I, that was my first trip with Jeff. You know, I was 
new, I was green, I was young, and I was still kind of like um, coming out from a conservative church. All right? So, so like, you know, like the first night, uh, we already did some crazy stuff. We, going, we already grow people taller already. Then we're like, wow, you know? And, and I mean, that, that, that's a place. So, I, remember, I think, was it the last day? Or the second, second day? Second, second day. It was the second, second day. day. And sunny, this youth camp, this kid, uh, can I say kid, this, teen, yeah, this teenager, I think he's a rugby player or what? He's no? a bodybuilder. He's a bodybuilder. Okay, th- think of it. He's a bodybuilder. Teenager, bodybuilder. He started um, manifesting. All right? And it was crazy. Why did I say it was crazy? Because it became like a rugby match. Because there was literally like, like about eight people, right? If, if I'm not wrong, about six to eight people pinning him down <laughs> and I'm like and, and the thing is I've never done deliverance I know don't know what I'm doing and, and he's like and all I could do is like out in Jesus name <laughs> and, and he's like Rah, you know like, like people pinning him down and, 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 and you know Jeff was like I don't know you were like preaching or leading oh, worship and I'm like I was leading worship yeah. and everybody was shouting like yeah, so, so Jeff was not available. I was the only one. And, and, and I'm like, man, I'm a noob, man. <laughs> I'll be honest. I'll, I was a noob. I didn't know what to do. I, I, I tried what I think uh, I, I should do, like casting the demon, binding the demon. But, you know, uh, nothing nothing really happened, you know. And, and I mean, I'll pass to Jeff to share the other part of the story. Uh, yeah, f- well, first of all, like, it was a soaking sesh, like, worship for two hours. Halfway through, this guy started to manifest, and you know he's a bodybuilder, and he he ran towards the glass window, like he, like I mean, he ran towards like, bam, and I mean thank God the window didn't break. If if it had broken, then the news will come out like youth camp, youth jump off the fifth floor. Uh, that was about fifth floor. Yeah, man. it's quite high. Youth jump off the fifth floor building, smash through the glass. Like that would that would be the headline. That's not good. Like. No, that's not good for all the, the church. <laughs> and, and I'm the speaker, so better be. <laughs> and so, uh, and he went down, and he was about to try the second time. That's where all the, well, and it was, it was loud, man. Someone, I mean, I can hear, I bind you. What's your name? Be quiet. And then, uh, shut up. I command you to leave. And I mean, if I'm the demon, I will be confused also because everybody is telling me to do something. I have to obey every single one of them, but they are all their instructions are different. I mean, that takes the, that's why deliverance takes as long as it is because all of us have authority, but we don't have unity. That's that's the problem, and that's what the authority we're talking about. You see, so and uh, I, I told them like, can you all <laughs> bring him behind and do like? So they went behind and uh, they did for a while. Yeah. When yeah. Clement came to me and said it's not working, I think you have to go. <laughs> so I right, find I went, and uh, I, and they're just still shouting and like, okay, okay, all right, fine. Like uh, I told them, like you gotta let him go, man, guys. Like and and can you all don't give any more instructions? Like, I mean, the demon is apparently confused. <laughs> oh, if I'm the demon, I'll be confused too. Like, wh- what do you want me to do? Tell me what you want. What what you really really want? What like what? what? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what I want. What black guy? Can you spice? Girl? <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, and uh, and let me do it. All of you come into agreement with one person. Yeah, in, in your group, you should have someone that you trust, and we come into agreement with the person. What the Lord says. That's faster. That's faster actually. Yeah. So uh, they come in agreement. I say, let him go. I say, are you sure? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Don't worry about it. <laughs> like, like, uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, honestly, I'm not really sure. But, but yeah, we'll go for it. Like, and so uh, uh, and, and apparently, like, um, yeah, he does have some gender issues. <laughs> yes, yes. And, yes. Uh, and I could find, I, I, I could imagine w- why the deliverance wasn't working because there are eight guys that like lying on top of him like ah, <laughs> ah, <laughs> ah. No. and so when the guy's like oh, oh no like I think we like, yeah, yeah yeah so but but it wasn't a deliverance it was just you know um asking the Lord uh, like the father have heard him like I, I see you know he got beaten by the bell and, and all the stuff and uh 
and it was all true and it says the father just loves you and just release your true identity to you and you know what the interesting thing is uh, uh, he cried and everything was settled uh, the next day he was normal he was like he was happy it was like 180 degrees change mm. uh, that's the work of the Holy Spirit like I didn't do anything it's just the power of the Holy Spirit yeah I did I, I, oh yeah th- it just happened 180 degrees change any problems if you have any problems, don't want, I don't want to make it into the media. You want blame the management, yeah? I'm I'm just uh, <laughs> I'm just releasing a present. That's all, yeah. Yep. So yeah. So mm. well, since we are talking about casting out demons, <laughs> um, yeah, there was this case uh, in my previous church, yeah, uh, where I was also pastoring. So there's this guy, right? Uh, very strange. Um, he he would have a tumor in the body we, we would uh, minister to him tumor just dis- disappeared two weeks later we, uh, n- uh, new tumors will appear in another place a- and then uh, pray for him and tumor disappears then tumor appears in an- another place uh, but w- we used to pray for him me and my senior pastor previous senior pastor uh, after our uh, Chinese service uh, Chinese speaking service on Sunday nights, and uh, it'll, it'll take uh, it's quite long. It can take one and a half, two hours each wow. time. Wow! Yeah, and then when we, when we <laughs> when we pray for him, right, he will manifest and and he will turn into all kinds of like animals, like tiger, monkey. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Can you can you do some demonstration? <laughs> <laughs> can you do all the animals just to, so people can can understand it better? <laughs> you only did one animal. Wu Xing Quan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wu Xing Quan. Yeah, correct. Also, you practice that. The maybe is the so. animals from the Wu Xing Quan. So this is probably practice that. Yeah. So okay. So in Chi- in China, there's a martial arts called uh, five form feast, which basically uh, is five animals. Five animal forms like tiger, crane, uh, crane. monkey. <laughs> he became a crane. No, that no, he didn't become a crane. Got <laughs> tiger. He 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 had tiger and monkey, right? And 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 and, 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 and so his personality will change. And like when I pray for him, he will like try to claw at me. But every time he he like he his hands cannot reach me like. His hands will reach for me, and before he can touch me, right, it's like his his entire hand will will like lose strength, and 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 fall like, yeah, fall down limp, yeah. So it was very interesting. But he would be roaring and shouting, and vomiting. And I remember one time he we had four bags of uh plastic bags of his vomit. Oh my god. Yeah. And and yeah, there was one Sunday, you know, before before the whole thing, you know, one of our, our, our youths uh she she said, Oh uh Pastor, you know, um I, I want to st- study for my exam tonight and I'm gonna bring a friend and the friend is non believer friend. So oh they no. <laughs> she and the non believer friend was in the other room at the church office. Yeah. And try to study, <laughs> and from the other <laughs> side, right? <laughs> they can he- they can hear the the guy screaming rah, 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 for two hours, right? <laughs> so it's like that whole night they they stay over in in the church office. They couldn't sleep. They thought they were thinking, you know, like, wow, pastor cast out the demon. Where the demon go to? <laughs> <laughs> it was a bad night to choose to <laughs> to stay in the church. <laughs> uh, but um, but the the thing is this: the thing is, the fact was, the demon could could not hurt me or my pastor. He could only try to scare us. And honestly, to us, it was not scary. We were right in the room with him, seeing him roar, seeing him like 
try to claw us was not scary. In fact, it was like pretty hilarious to us. But to the the uh to to the two girls who was in the other room who did not get to see him, who who did not get attacked by him, they were freaked out of their minds. <laughs> you know, uh and yeah, and and what's what's the difference? The difference is uh the the, the difference is just just that we know that the enemy cannot touch us because he who is in you is greater than he, he who is in the world. <laughs> and, and, and so I, there are many times when a demon manifests when I'm ministering to someone. The, pers- the, the demon is trying to scare me or trying to intimidate, intimidate me. Happens a lot. Even once the demon say, even past, it, no, yeah, he, he, the demon say, even Jeff, Jeff cannot cast me out. What can you do? Oh, really? Yeah, that? I tell you, I, I tell you offline. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, but what th- happened? Yeah, that was the statement. I was c- trying to cast, mm-hmm. cast the. De- it was not just one demon. It was like oh. that day was at least twelve demons that I cast out out Get of us. the person. So I cast out a few, you cast out the rest. <laughs> ah. So it's like, <laughs> so I cast out a few first, then like uh, he's hiding behind. So ah. so said, you can't do anything. Ah. So you cast out the rest. <laughs> no, no, you, 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 uh, it wasn't a meeting. It was you, you, you ministered to her like another time. Oh, okay. So I think yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, but I, I guess that, that was the sentence that got me. Really? That really, w- what arrogance. Yeah, yeah. Well, and 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 so that's because he's hiding, right? So I stared Coward. into <laughs> her eyes, right? And basically, I'm s- like, and she's glaring back, right? The demon is gla- glaring back <laughs> to me through the eyes of of the person, right? So I I know the per- the demon is trying to intimidate me and 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 trying to like uh uh. Like try to tell me, you know, you can't do anything to me, right? Mm. But I know that's a lie, right? So I, I look back into a demon, uh, with very fierce eyes, and I said, "Out!" Right? Like with with like out, something like that. Right? <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, some, some then you know that b- b- before. Yeah. So so. <laughs> So that then she <laughs> the vomit count. <laughs> that's like a horror story, bro. That's like a horror story. The way you yeah 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 yeah. It was it was pretty drama. <laughs> Actually, the whole the that that whole entire it was it was it was really drama. You know. <laughs> so the first the first demon came out first. Then the second demon came out. Then the rest became very easy. The rest, you know, because yeah. So uh. Yeah, so the thing is, you need to know who you are. You need to know your authority. Yeah, it's about knowing who you are, asserting your authority. And then, yeah, the, 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 the demon cannot, yeah. Then the demon have no choice but to leave, right? <laughs> I don't know what you guys are laughing about. <laughs> yo, yo. <laughs> well, well, it's on repeat though. <laughs> yeah, yo, the vomiting part was... Well, Hilarious. Some, some B great movie happened. Right, right, I, right. I, I, I was okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, yeah. no, but it's true because I mean, like, I don't know why, but my early days of deliverance are very drama. One, like, first was with Jeff. Mm-hmm. I remember got one. Uh, I think Jeff was around. Uh, we were in a country, and I remember we started laying hands. He came out with martial art like Wing Chun like that, and deflect my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. I remember I, I, I was shocked because I was trying to like put my hands on, on his head to really cast a demon out and the moment I touched it was like a quick reflex he just hit wow, like some kung fu move you know mm. and after that, he got some funny stance oh boy <laughs> I'm not sure you remember or not <laughs> go on, go on, this is children. <laughs> then go one time I got kicked remember <laughs> remember yeah, yeah I remember that yeah <laughs> yeah you were there you were there also yeah, three of us were there also Surabaya. oh my gosh Oh my god, I got kicked by the demon. 
Okay, like, actually, he wasn't really possessed. It was a failed deliverance because it wasn't a deliverance in the first place. <laughs> it was more like an inner healing than a yeah, deliverance. Yeah, it was an inner healing. Yeah. But I got kicked by a man because one of my teammates, uh, not not Jeff or Patrick, one of my teammates started laughing at a person. <laughs> It's like, <laughs> that, like, like, long story short, uh, one of our teammates started laughing at a person. Like, maybe she had the joy of the Lord, I don't know, but yeah, yeah. apparently it was very offensive to the person. And, and she, she basically, she just kept laughing, laughing in front of her face. And I mean, I'll be upset too if some random people laugh at my face for like more than a minute. Yeah. And I think he was so filled with anger. And when I want to pray for him, he just like wanted to kick me. And then suddenly he got tackled yeah, <laughs> onto got the ground. Out, and he's not a believer. Yeah, he's, he's not a believer. He's and, not a believer. And you got like three fat ashes sitting on you, right? I mean, <laughs> if that's your encounter of church, you went to oh church. Oh my gosh! <laughs> someone laughed at you. <laughs> you got angry, and suddenly you see three person with suits. It's one on your stomach, the other one grabbing your head. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh! I don't think you ever want to go back to church I, again. I like, remember that he was like sitting on like his chest area and yeah. pointing at him in his face and trying to cast <laughs> a demon that wasn't there in the first place. Yeah, man. And man, that, that that's definitely a very bad first uh, yeah, church man. experience. I I don't think I'll go back to church if someone sit on me like. Oh god, your archer is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it it it's, it it don't feel like a chair. It feels like WWE. <laughs> yeah, it feels like some wrestling. I ring. just need to go there. One, two, three. Like <laughs> 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 you need to tap out. You yeah. need to tap out so that Jesus can come. Yeah, you're gonna tap out, so you have to pin up. We have to pin him up. <laughs> Yeah, but, All right, but, uh, <laughs> but let's let's move back to the topic. I don't know what we turned up about deliverance. <laughs> it's but, yeah, it's part yeah. of the power gift. Right? Yeah, yeah, part of the power oh, gift. No, yeah, uh, you are exercising authority. Yeah, over uh, the spirit realm. Uh, that was one. That's one. Was one other time. Um, I was. It was another mission trip. Uh, I was. I was in my twenties. Yeah. Uh, I was in my twenties, and we we went to northern Thailand, to the borders of northern Thailand, uh, where it's really no man's land, yeah. And 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 we s- so we finished we finished the the trip, and actually we are we are the whole team was in in a car. Uh, going back to I think Chiang Mai, yeah, we are, we're heading heading back to Chiang Mai in, in in this car, and the interesting thing was this car right in the front windscreen, uh, along the top and the sides of windscreen were a lot of uh, amulets, yeah, uh, w- a a lot of uh, occultic amulets. Uh, so we noticed that. Yeah, that there were a lot of uh, amulets on on top, like that, and at the side of the front windscreen. And and it was a long ride, you know, like at least for four six to six hours. So along the way, we started singing. We started singing, uh, just Christian songs, you know. Yeah, we just start singing song after song after song. <laughs> Uh, and I think if we were singing a song about the power of Christ, or, you know, we were, and we were singing in Chinese, all right? We were singing in Chinese. <laughs> we were just singing about, I, if I don't remember, really remember wrongly, about the power of Christ or whatever. Yeah, this is like, 20, like around 20 years ago, all right? So I <laughs> can't really remember what song we were singing, but we were singing and all of a sudden there was a huge... Uh, Sound, <laughs> yeah, and all of us were stunned. You know, all of us stopped singing, and basically the the windscreen, right, the front windscreen, whole windscreen, uh, cracked. Yeah, the whole windscreen cracked as we were singing Christian song. So we kept quiet. It's like, oh, okay. So in our hearts, we thought, okay, so uh. Yeah, I guess I guess the demons are not happy, <laughs> uh, and then so 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 uh, so the the man was very very upset. The man uh, like stopped the car. He was very very upset, and and uh, the driver the driver yeah, and so he he used 
uh, he he put a cloth wrapped around his his hand and you know uh, with his fist wrapped around the cloth he began to punch his windscreen because he can't see he can't see out of the cracked windscreen he began to punch the uh, the windscreen and remove the entire windscreen except the sides the top sides because that's where his uh, amulets are so he left his amulets on the windscreen like that like so just uh, his amulets with the glass lah, right so the rest of the glass he punched it out and and threw it out so it's just just you know uh, <laughs> so he was driving a car and the air was was uh, coming into the car and with the wind windscreen uh, the sides of the 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 windscreen with the, with the cracked glass like that with the amulets on top. Can you visualize that? Yeah. So he was driving, and and and, and then you would think that as the wind wind was blowing, right? What uh, was coming in? Um, that if 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 that windscreen were to collapse, it would just collapse inwards. <laughs> Which we didn't think, you know, uh, it would happen. But that's a very interesting thing. As he was driving and the wind was blowing in, all of a sudden, th this windscreen, right, this the, uh, uh, the sides of, uh, of, of the glass that is left, that is uh, carrying all the amulets, the entire thing, flew out, flew up uh, above the roof of, of the car. The, so it, it flew out like that. The car uh, continued going and then it landed on the road behind. And then the whole front win windscreen was clear well glass. You know, all of us like jaw drop, you know. Then the guy got even more upset, <laughs> right? It's like, <laughs> uh, he, he, he stopped the car, went, <laughs> went back and took a look at his amulet that's on the, on the ground, but he, he didn't pick it up anymore, right? So, so we, we continued our journey with, in the car with no windscreen. And, and, and so, uh, the mission team leader was actually sitting at uh, beside the the driver's seat, right on the left, and he was telling us, like, um, uh, "Wow, this is very strange, right?" Because he he is engineer, he is like uh, engineer trained, and he is he is working as an engineer, right? He's, he's, he, and he's saying, uh, with with the wind blowing like that, if if the windscreen should collapse, it should like just the that 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 piece that whole piece of glass should fall should fall inwards and 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 collapse into the car. It should hit him and the driver. You know, there is no way it defies all um, all f laws of physics for the for that piece of glass like that to just fly out upwards and then land l land on, on the road. There is no way, like it defies the laws of physics, it's totally impossible. Um, yeah. <laughs> but that's just one that's just one uh just that's that's just one example of how i mean we were just honestly we were not doing spiritual warfare we were just minding our own business we we're just singing songs and worshiping god because you know it's a long journey and 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 we are bored but you know <laughs> yeah the, it's the power god released yeah is the power of God released and <laughs> and yeah str strong strongholds 
have to shatter and come down. Yeah, even yeah, in, in the car. Yep. Jeff, you want to? <coughs> no, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what? I mean, as as I was sharing, you know, I was just thinking like, wow. I want to encourage better people like don't discount all these things, you know, because it is it's probably not a story you hear every day, you know. But but all this story that we share, whether it's deliverance or you know, the testimony, they are all um, very real, you know. Maybe we can end off by some more light-hearted one. <laughs> See, one thing, been, like, one thing that been said, right? It's not the demons that can be seen that I'm afraid of. It's the demons that we cannot see that I'm more afraid of. Because the enemy's strategy is always covert. Once he's not in sight, we lose the battle. Most wars are won with the element of surprise, that means we, and they will not want to be seen. So, uh, yeah, I'm telling you. So, just that being said, like, uh, honestly, you'll be surprised where the most darkest place is. Actually, I mean, I've been to a lot of interesting high places and stuff. Actually, I come to the conclusion that business is the darkest arena. Because it's in the business arena that you can't really totally see what the enemy is doing. And what you can't see, you can't, uh, what you can't identify, you will not have power over. So I just want to end that whole deliverance power and authority with that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Any other story you guys want to share? No, uh, got a lot la, but no la, too many demon stories yeah, yeah let's not, not share not demon story let's share some <laughs> no fun <laughs> story no demon stories yeah let's let's know. share let's, let's maybe talk about food multiplication food multiplication you know because because i think i think that 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 that, that is also like um like what patrick salem the, the control yeah. over the nature i i don't know about food multiplication but what about fat multiplication <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. All right, anyway, anyway, uh, I ha- do have a story about food multiplication, and I do have friends that see, see all of this uh, um, really common. And I was discussing with Jeff, one common thing about food multiplication thing is this. When it happens, no one knows it. Mm-hmm. When it happens, no one knows it. Either they are scooping food for people or they're giving out things. Mm-hmm. You know, when the miracle is in motion, you know, when the thing is uh, multiplying, no one realizes it. Like, oh, wow, it's multiplying. Because a lot of time when people kind of like realize it, it actually stopped already. Or the moment we realize it, it will stop. You know, it's, it's mm. kind of really interesting. You know, what, what, what do you mean by that? Like, uh, I was in South Africa for a mission trip and I know we, we, we went to like this uh, village and we're like giving food to the kids. You know, so it's all packed already. But we have limited amount, you know. We have maybe, I don't know, maybe like 20 packet or something like that. I can't remember. You know, so the kids started showing up. You know, so we give out, you know, one box two box, three box, you know, started giving up. And after um, we finished giving up, you know, we st- someone started saying, oh, hey, this is weird. We have X number, like maybe about 20 uh, box of food, you know, but look at how many kids there are. Then we started to count. There are actually more kids having the box of food than where we started off. But I can tell you, when, when, when it was giving up, no one knows. No one like, hey, wow, there's one more, there's one more, you know? And, and it, it's so interesting, like, I mean, throughout um, different cultures and different parts of the country, actually, food multiplication looks different um, at different parts of the world. Mm. I remember one, 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 one of it was, actually, Jeff, you told me when, when I was a young Christian, you talked about the, the rice bucket that, yeah, the that, rice bucket. that never goes empty, you yeah. know? Maybe you want to share that? I mean, it's, it's a story. Well, China always have that happen. Yep. Uh, I know uh, our friend, like, uh, from India, had that happen, can't say her name because like uh, she will get her into trouble but but what what I know is like uh, it the only only stop happening when someone realized like hey like the rice is not running out and and, and from there onwards it stopped <laughs> 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 yeah somehow yeah so sometimes it's just better not to know just oh, okay just go on just keep keep pouring keep keep Bringing the bottles, keep bringing the containers, keep bringing the containers. Don't say, oh, there's no more containers. Keep bringing it. 
Keep bringing it. It's, you know? it's true. I was using my cl- uh, like facial cleanser and I'm just thinking, mm, how come I never use finish? <laughs> nah, like, like how can I never use finish? Like literally, I just keep squeezing, keep squeezing, it just keep coming out. Like literally, I use like almost a year, you know, mm. like it just keep going. But literally, the moment I start to like investigate, hey, how much left? Huh? Now I'm like, no more already. <laughs> 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 like literally, it, 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 it's very, really, really weird. You know, like when, when it keep squeezing out, my first thought is like, wow, thank you, Jesus. Keep, keep doing it. But the moment I change my mindset to like, I'm a bit skeptic now, no? I want to investigate it, oh, no more already. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Clement, don't look at how much you have in your bank account. Just keep spending. Ken, <laughs> give me your credit card. Uh, <laughs> I will spend uh, for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad example. You need to walk the talk. If you believe in this example, you should give out the credit card right now. <laughs> well, give me a hug. Yeah, we are on live right now. Jeff and I can spend for you. Yeah, I, hope I mean, after all, the first thing we'll get on the credit card is some lobster. <laughs> yeah, yeah, payback. <laughs> That's payback. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, but, so I, I mean, like, this, thi- this I, I feel like the multiplication thing are not necessarily something that you only s- see on mission trip. Because I really feel like a lot, a lot of times we have the mindset of like certain miracles only happen in certain setting. And I feel like when we start to have the mindset, we actually disqualify the same miracle to happen in our life. Mm-hmm. You know, because because I I'm, when 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 I was learning to move the supernatural, you know, I think one of the common question people would ask like, oh, you know, there's always more miracles in the mission field. <laughs> That's not true. That is not true. You know, wherever you're at right now, whether you're in U.S., whether if you're in Taiwan, whether in Hong Kong, whatever country you're in, that is your mission field. Anyway, I mean, uh, we can't really travel much to preach mm-hmm. the gospel. So wherever. Uh, whatever nation you're from, that is your mission field. You see, the thing is, I feel that a lot of time it's a mindset shift. You know, at the time when we go on a mission trip, our mindset is like, wow, I raised the money already. Or I, I paid etiquette already. You know, and then we change to this mindset like, I am on a mission trip. And because mm-hmm. I'm on a mission trip, Jesus is going to show up. And because I'm on a mission trip, I'm going to really evangelize. I'm going to pray for the sick. I'm going to cast out demons. I'm going to expect things. You know, but the thing is this, if we had the same expectation went on a mission trip to have the same expectation on our daily life we're going to see miracles we're going to see miracles now i think over the past months you know i i actually shared either on saturday or wednesday like some random moments where i pray for maybe the grab driver maybe pray for a stranger because the point is like god is really on the move but god cannot move unless you want to move with him i always say this the holy spirit is a gentleman you know, he don't, he don't kick the door, you know, like the revelation, you know, Jesus talking about, he didn't kick the door down, like some SWAT team and like point the gun and you're like, come on, do it, you know, like, and the same thing, it's a supernatural, he, he is a gentleman and, and being a gentleman, he's always having this invitation, hey, would you want to go pray for this person, let's do it together, hey, would you want to tell this person about this prophetic word, because I got a word, I just need your mouth, I got a healing power, I just need your hand, you see, there's this beautiful partnership whereby the Lord will not move because He choose, He want and choose to partner with us. Like, let's be honest, you know, God is sovereign. God is all-powerful in every way. God can do anything at any point. Mm. He can get everyone safe He want. He can get everyone raised from the dead He want. He can get everyone healed. But He wants to display His glory and power through a vessel and that's us. And no other creation has that privilege except us. You never see a cockroach filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, creeping, creeping. Holy roach. Holy roach. You don't have a holy roach. You know, you don't you don't have a have like other creation. You call a donkey. Yeah. Uh, that's, for that's a, a moment. Good, for a moment. <laughs> yes, for a moment. Because there's no other vessel available then. <laughs> you become Shrek's donkey, right? <laughs> Shrek donkey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but but I, I just want to encourage you because I think we are on our last session and and one way to close it is to like let let's have our perspective right you know let's not limit because I know some of the story we share tonight are like oh got demons in this country what that country you know got this na- natural disaster or whatever and and a lot of time we disqualify ourselves because like oh you know Pastor Clement I'm not in this country I'm not in country etc. You know, I'm in an urban, urban city. You know, we, we start to list out why certain miracles will not take place in our life because of certain setup. You know, but you need to know the greatest setup is you showing up. 
Uh, that's a good word. The greatest setup is you showing up. The moment you show up, God show up, and that's a greatest setup for humanity to experience the goodness of God. Mm-hmm. We, we don't need to like, oh, hey, must have tornado coming, then we could pray. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, oh, you know, like we, we, we don't have to, we don't have to do that. We, we just got to show up and, and it's really about learning, learning to take risks. You know, learning to take risks. I, I remember, like, what, what I, I do crazy things. <laughs> uh, when, I remember when I led the mission trip uh, to Guatemala, I brought the better, I led the better team, you know. So all, all of them are basically uh, first year students, second year students, you know, I was the team leader to bring them. And I remember we, we went, we, we got to minister in the hospital, basically they go to the hospital and pray. And I tell you, like, crazy things happen. You know, my group of students came back and said, like, wow, if we have only just a bit more time, we will have cleared the whole ward. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? So apparently they went to some maternity ward like that, and then all like give birth, got a lot of pain, you know, they pray, all the pain left, <laughs> like one by one until like, oh, time's up. You know, like, 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 I, I, like we have to take risks. And at the hospital, the first thing I, I told the student, all right, who is not scared of the dead because I'm going to go to the mall. <laughs> like, like that, 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 that is the, adventure that I crave that I'm excited mm-hmm. about is to take risks you know and, and some of my students like freaked out oh, oh go to the mall oh, no 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 it's okay then go heal the sick don't, mm. don't, those, those, those are daring you know because I say like hey you, we, I don't know what we're going to see you know we're in a mall you know <laughs> you can choose what you want to see anyway zombie you know? acropolis <laughs> <laughs> you know? but, but I think it's so important that you know we, we, if we really desire to either activate uh, in the power give, you know, move in science, wonders, miracle. It is so important. We need to have the right mindset. Mm-hmm. And because I feel that over the past few weeks, we do share a lot of stories that, that might coincidentally be happening overseas, but that doesn't mean God is more powerful overseas than in your country. Because the same God in Singapore is the same God in USA and the same God in any other country mm-hmm. in the world. It's the same God, it's the same spirit, it's the same power and the That's same right. potential. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you know, that being said, like, um, someone asked, like, is business a darker? Well, for sure it is because it's COVID and you cannot see what the enemy is doing. But I can tell you, like, uh, in the spiritual realm, like, corruption, all these things, as much as you don't think that there's spiritual implications, there are. So, for someone who, uh, which I've seen in the business arena, like, and I do minister to business people, I can tell you that it's a dark place. Uh, the the second thing is uh, please Sunny, I forget what I want to say. Like, what do you say just now? I, I was tying into what you say. Like, oh yeah, yeah. We in, in the early days of Soak, I actually we actually got a funeral, almost got a funeral director to work with us. And uh, I mean, we we kind of proposed to him like, uh, I mean, you get the dead bodies first, right? <laughs> I mean, we can try raising a dead. You know, like you know, we can actually pray and see what happens, you know. Uh, I mean, you go to the mall, all you need is the name list, right? <laughs> Lazarus, come forth. Stephen, come forth. John, come forth. I, I, you know, there are 100 people there, you know, maybe one of or two of them will respond. And or if all of them respond, then you got a zombie apocalypse or something like, <laughs> walking dead. <laughs> but but uh, uh, we, we, we actually almost partner with uh, this guy who uh, is a funeral, he has a funeral director's kind of business and uh and uh, what well the problem is he said oh okay but what's going to happen to my business <laughs> i mean i understand that like, your business <laughs> is kind of connected to dead people but but no y- you know what if they raise then you can throw a party like right? change it into a resurrection re- no re- every resu- uh, everyone resurrection. will want to send their dead to the father his parlor. <laughs> well, it depends on yeah, whether you want the person alive or dead, right? Some people you just want them to die, right? <laughs> depends uh, on how much you hate yeah. the person, yeah, actually. So rest uh, in peace or pieces depends, <laughs> like you know. So uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> what about business? And so the point is this: you need kingdom business people who want the supernatural to move. Like, I mean, that's that's true. Mm. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Anyone? Patrick, anything else you want to add on before we conclude? Um, we were talking about raising the dead, right? Uh, personally, I don't have any s- success case before. Personally, although I I was on, I did see the case where uh Jeff uh prayed for that girl in Myanmar, and she she you know she got raised from the dead. 
but uh, there was a strip uh, also in uh, like the bo- borders of northern Thailand. It was another trip with Andrew around. Yeah, there was three of us that was there, and we, you know, uh, I think it was a Sunday. We just uh, we just finished our, our trip in the village. It was another village, but with uh, and this um, this is about ten years ago, and we already just started soap then actually, yeah, probably about maybe twenty eleven. And so we were about to leave the village. I, I just preached, I think, that morning probably. And then uh, news came that one of the church members just died. So we <laughs> so we said, oh, we want to go and take a look. So we went down to the house, you know, the, uh, the family members were all crying. And we went in, uh, three of us, we lay hands and we prayed. And we prayed for maybe a good 20 minutes. Uh, and as we prayed, right, we could feel, we could feel, we could we could feel some sensations, like you know, we probably felt some power, some energy, some heat. One of us, you know, we we kind of I thought we felt like the body move, like some you know some movement, like slight movement, but but after praying for twenty thirty minutes, although we felt a bit of sensation, and we don't know whether it was really our imagination or it was really the body moved yeah it was very slight and so um uh nothing really happened like as in like the 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 person did not come alive but we were praying in faith we were praying in faith like we were praying like uh believing that god can do a miracle but the 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 entire family was like crying, was mourning, and the the pastor who brought us there was also like consoling them and say, "Oh, he's dead, already. let him let." Uh, and basically, treating as like everybody was treating like okay, it's game over. And, and and so, so we didn't get to see, we didn't get to see the person raised from dead. But uh, we went anyway. Uh, nobody believed that that uh, the, I mean everyone believed that he was already dead. A family members, the pastor, but we just prayed, be believing that yeah, it's still possible. And didn't happen. But uh, yeah, but that did not take away our belief that it was possible. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And and the thing is. It was worth a try. L- let's just do it. Come on. Yeah. A- and so, um, yeah. So that, uh, so it does not change anything about our belief that right. God can raise the dead after the incident. All right. Now the thing was this: uh, Andrew, uh, my friend, uh, who was there with me. Later on, he was in another trip, like years later, in Mozambique. And he, uh, uh, it was a mission trip, and it was on the road. And while on the road, there was a car accident, there was a dead girl. And uh, he and his, his um, whoever he was with, with his, they friend. Pr- his friend, his friend, <laughs> very famous friend. <laughs> <laughs> They prayed for the girl, and the girl came alive. Like the girl was dead, you know. Uh, but but she. She uh yeah she got back, alive. And and so. So Andrew prayed with me for, f- yeah, to try to raise the dead. Didn't happen, but that didn't stop him believing. And years later, he he had an encounter of raising the dead. Mm-hmm. In that same trip, o- Mozambique, uh, their car ran out of petrol, went on for hours with an empty tank. I, 
right? Like the tank was empty, but it went on for hours, hours, hours. The car didn't stop. Same trip that Moses, uh, big trip. They were, you know, his phone, the battery went dry. They, they had no, he had no place to charge the phone. The battery went from zero, battery went from zero percent to hundred percent. This is, this called miracle. <laughs> Defies logic. Yeah, maybe I should share about the Mel Tari one. You yeah. can share yeah. about Mel Tari. Uh, Mel, uh, I, I, was, I was kind of like talking to Mel. Uh, some of you know who Mel Tari is, like Papa Mel. Like he, he's like, he's like to share stories. Like, well, so with this guy that he kind of trained, uh, he's like a pastor and a church planter. So he, he, cha- he trained them and they planted churches. This is in South America where he drove his car and uh <laughs> he went on a patrol in the middle of the mountain and he didn't know what to do. And he got so frustrated, he came up and he did the impossible. He got a jelly can and there was this water pump that's nearby. Uh he <laughs> turned on the tap and put water into the jelly can <laughs> and he went back to the car, opened the p- petrol catchment, right? And he poured the je- water from the jelly can into the car. And he put back the jelly can and he, d- <laughs> he drove. <laughs> I think it was two days. Uh, it was like a crazy kind of like two-day journey and stuff. It was like, <laughs> oh, that's a miracle. They had to turn water into petrol. That was that, that's going to be an amazing gift to have, man. Like, I mean, praise the Lord. Like, just give me t- one 50 gallons and shaka. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, I, I was on this mission trip. Yeah, if I'm not wrong, it's a good Friday. It was a good Friday, I think. Uh, like I was going to um, Malaysia to preach. This was a few years ago, you know. So I, I had a team in my car. Okay, let me think. Huh? So this was 2018. Okay, I think it was a good Friday, 2018. All right. So I had a team in my car. So, uh, so we were driving uh, on the causeway, on the bridge uh, from, from Malaysia to, from Singapore to Malaysia, there's this bridge called the causeway. And because it was a good Friday, like, it was jammed. Like, from, it took like, I think four hours to get across the bridge. Yeah. So so we were stuck in the car like uh, it w- the car was not moving at all. It's like so the the traffic was so so heavy. So I was with so we were like moving so slowly. It was like two hours past. And then I, I I saw. You know, after two hours in the car, I saw my uh, petrol meter. It was like half tank. And the thing is. When I, when I, when we just uh, like two hours ago, you know, when we start going across the bridge, it was at three quarter tank. So it's like in two hours, it went down. Uh, yeah, it went down so much, right? Like I was calculating, wow, this is a lot of money, <laughs> right? I was like, at that time, still having a lot of poverty mindset that I need to get healed of. Mm. Yeah. Wow, there's a lot of money. So I was complaining to my whole ho- like my, my whole team in the car. It's like pointing to them. Look, look, you know, like it's, uh, like uh, uh like two hours and, and and I've lost so much petrol. And so they all heard me ranting and they I was pointing to my, my, my car medium. Yeah, uh, this is not faith. Yeah, this is, this is Complete me that. with my poverty mindset. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, <laughs> and then one hour passed, right? Like one hour passed, and we were still on the causeway, but we are we are nearing the we are nearing the immigration point. Right? Then all of a sudden, right? I notice my my uh petrol meter again and you know just now it was at half tank then 
I saw it's back at three quarter tank. Then what? Then I like, hey, look! And I took, I took, uh, I, I, like, I, I exclaimed, look, look, no, just now it was at half tank, right? Then everybody said yes, yeah, but now it's at three quarter tank, and and so I. I, I was not imagining because everyone saw, right? Uh, this is not, this is, obviously this is not me moving in the power gifts, <laughs> all right? Because I was not moving in faith, all right? But it's, it's God's grace. And he was, he is one working in miracles uh, to show himself real, uh, the way he wants to, and I guess he's just try, he, he was just trying to do something to get my attention to break my poverty mindset. Yeah, and yeah, and and so yeah, God can do anything to get your attention. Yeah. And, and so he got my attention that day. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, so I don't know whether this is in point or our point, <laughs> but never mind. <laughs> never mind. It's still a point. It's still a point. Still a point, still a point. You know, but I, I want to um, address uh, what you said earlier on. I thought it was really good because uh, Pastor Patrick was talking about, like, even I haven't seen it yet, I still believe and I still do it. You know, because we need to know uh, the, the lack of miracle does not change the nature of our Father. Right? The lack of miracle does not change the nature of our Father. Just because we don't see the dead raised doesn't mean He is not the one that raised the dead. Just because we haven't seen the sick healed through us yet doesn't mean He's not the healer. You see, the lack of miracle of the, or the breakthrough that we want to see doesn't change His nature. Mm -hmm. His nature is fixed. He's a healer. He's a provider. He's a defender. He's a loving Father. Etc. I mean, it doesn't change, and so we we need to take take uh, important point because, like just just like Patrick, what one of the thing is I like to challenge where I'm at in my spiritual walk. Like early on, I talk about going to the mall, and to be honest, I brought the student to the mall, and no one came out from the mall. <laughs> no one got raised from the dead, mm -hmm. but but I have expectation. I told my students, you never know. Maybe tomorrow newspaper got people walk out of it and report newspaper. We never know, you know. And and after that, we came out to the hospital. And we got so excited because someone just passed away. It was like a fresh body, if I might say, you know? And it was like in the hallway. So I called my students, like, okay, maybe the one, you know, they, they passed away in a mock many days already. <laughs> Let's pray for this one. This one just passed away within the day. So we prayed, like later he was covered in a cloth mm. outside the hospital hallway and he still has a name tag on uh, his toe. It was very raw. And he, when we got to read his name and his name is like, Mario de Jesus. <laughs> I kid you not. Jesus, man. I kid you not. You're I kid Jesus on the like. I know. I mean, that, that, that was in Guatemala. Jesus. So Jesus was his, like, his last name or what. And I was like, oh, I don't know. Do we call Jesus wake up or what? We don't know. You know? But you see, this is a very interesting opportunity for the student and for myself to learn because I kid you not, we spent almost about maybe two hours there. Wow. We were like worshipping Jesus, commanding, you know, and people like walking past, you know, and we think like, hey, wake up. Wake up in Jesus' name. You know, like yeah. we try always, we start mm. worshipping, praying in tongues, whatever. For I, I kid you not, almost two hours. You lie on the body like no, 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 no. That'd be really <laughs> weird. That'd be really weird. We we won't get kicked out. We yeah. get kicked out. That, that that that's that maybe that maybe Patrick will be inspired to do that. Mm. <laughs> not he me. Might be. He huh? might be. But but my point of sharing this story is this: like in in that journey of moving in supernatural, it's not going to be always a hundred percent. There will always be people not healed yet. There will always be people, you know, you want to raise the date. It, it didn't happen the way you want it, and etc. There will be wrong prophetic word that you give. You know, this is part and parcel of the journey and, and growing up. We, 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 we can't, you know, but one thing I just want to encourage, if I can, is to be hungry. Be crazy for the impossible. And I want to share uh, this dog story because we keep talking about raising the date. And last week I shared with them this raising the dog story and when i first heard it it blew my mind i'm like no this is fake this is fictional you know but it's the true story and i heard it from the person who prayed for the dog 
you know. So long story short, you know, I heard this story. Uh, I was still living in US, and it was a church in US. It's not even a better church. It's another church, and this church saw like at at a point it was like twenty to thirty people raised from the dead. All right, and the funny thing, funny thing is that it's all raised by the church member, not the pastor. <laughs> The pastor is a, is a friend. The pastor will say, yeah, you know, all my church members are raising the dead, but I haven't raised the dead yet. <laughs> so That's the church members are doing more things than the pastor. All right? So there's this lady. Uh, she didn't just raise the dead. She raised a dead dog. So she, so she shared this story like, you know, I think she was out doing grocery shopping or what. And she witnessed a car accident. You know, like she saw like, like a truck hit a dog. It was a very bad accident. So, so I have to be a bit graphic because the, the, the test mates are graphic, you know. And, and so she found the dog under, like, the truck. And, you know, the, the dog was bleeding. And I think some of the, the body parts were coming out, the innards were coming out. And she started praying, you know. She started praying. And, and she said this, she said this, when I started praying, suddenly time c- kind of rewind. Time rewinded. For some reason, she said the dog, all the blood, whatever body part that was sticking out, all went like time we went like a time stone. Okay, no concept like like Marvel time stone. Like all, all the blood, the innards, all went back in, inside the dog. And then after that, the dog got up, and then start barking and move away. <laughs> like th- th- that's what happened. She witnessed that, and she was the one praying. You know, and when I heard this, I was like, man. That blows my mind, you know. Now, of course, there's no dog for me to pray, you know. But I have a dog. I've been praying for my dog. My, my dog is still going strong. My dog is about like maybe 18 or 19 years old already. I'm still going strong, man. You know, <laughs> every time I see my dog, I pray, I pray. Uh, but, 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 you know, I, I'm sharing this story to, to, to really stretch your mindset, you know, to stretch your paradigm. You know, like when we say that, you know, God can do the impossible, do we really believe it? Because sometimes the impossible has limitation in our logical mind. Mm. And because of that logical mind, it becomes a barrier. And we start to say, no, cannot one, cannot, cannot, cannot. You know, because if we really want to learn how to activate the power game, move in science, one miracle, we need sometimes really to throw away the logic. Because there's no logic in the way how Jesus turned water into wine. <laughs> you know, there's no logic how, uh, how Lazarus did on the fourth day, and he got raised up. Like, you know, know. so the body is rotting for four days already. Mm. And at, at that time, there was no, no like, uh, good equipment like what we, we have right now to preserve the body. So, so when Lazarus raised from the dead, it, it was like a, a corpse that is rotten beyond and come back to life, you know? Mm. So, you know, like, like, we need to throw that logic part away and, and start really believing that God is God of impossible. Mm. All right? So I think that, that, that's all I want to end, end my sharing with that story. I, I wouldn't know when I can share the dog story. I don't see. I mean, in Thailand, we have someone that's like dead for three days. I think he will remember that the guy raised by himself. Nobody prayed for him. Mm. It's one of those unusual stories. Like, well, I mean, I tried, I tried raising a dead seven, uh, seven times. So, but one out of seven got raised. So that's not so bad. Like, <laughs> not so bad. <laughs> not so bad. Like, you know. That's not so bad. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. I think anything else you guys want to add before we wrap it up? No, we're fine. Oh, we can wrap it up. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Hey, we, we hope you've been blessed uh, by all this story. We hope the story stir a hunger. The story, um, you know, inspire you because, mm-hmm. you know, Jesus said, Patrick said this, you know, in the Bible, Jesus said you will do greater things. And, and I, I, I do want, want to also um, make a challenge that, you know, don't think of the story our, ours is like the high benchmark, you know, that's hard to achieve because you will write your own story and you'll see greater things. Mm. Maybe you're the one that prayed for seven, all, all seven got raised from the dead. Yep. <laughs> you yeah, know? Maybe not? you're the one that when you do deliverance, no crazy drama, the demon, wow, back you, you know, <laughs> like very easy deliverance, you know, you never get, get kicked by someone <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or don't have, you know, drama stuff, you know, like, like, do, like, I want to encourage you, you know, like the Bible said that you will do greater things and, and we hope uh, that, you know, through our sharing of our personal experience, it, it, it will really release an impartation. Because I, I, I personally believe that every testimony that's shared, there is a grace on the testimony. And I also pray that, you know, throughout all these four weeks that, you know, all the story, testimony, breakthroughs that, that you're here, 
it will be in an impartation that release that grace over your life to release the same breakthrough mm. in Jesus name Amen, Amen. Alright Okay So right now um, We want to go into a time of uh, offering Alright So for those of you who would like to give to Soakability Church You may do so uh, By scanning the QR code All you have to do is Number one Use your internet banking And you just scan a code And it will lead you to give to the church Number two You can write a check to Soakability And number three uh, You can do PayPal Alright So I do want to emphasize uh, for those of you who, uh, where Soakability is not your home church, please keep your tie to your local church. But if you want to sow above and beyond what we are doing, you know, through the, the training that we just gave just now, our Saturday service, you've been blessed by our ministry, you know, uh, feel free. Uh, we'll, we'll be really blessed and honored to receive them as well because we know that song is a good ground for revival. All mm -hmm. right. So I'm going to ask uh, Patrick to pray for tonight's offering. Father God, we thank you that you are so good. And that you are moving in our lives all the time. And Lord, we ask, oh God, that you help us, that, that we would partner with you in faith in every area of our lives. Even in our giving, Lord, we partner with you as we sow. Lord, we know that, that, that we shall reap a bountiful harvest in every area of our lives not just financially, but, but, but spiritually, mentally, emotionally, relationally, um, in every area of life, that, that, that you are waiting to prosper us yes, so yeah. wonderfully and beautifully. Mm. And so, Lord, we, we thank you uh, that this is a season that we learn to partner with you in faith. And Amen. this is a season we learn to exercise authority over every area of our lives to, to see impossible situations turn around, to, to, to see uh, breakthroughs break out, yeah, to, 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 to see uh, you move in the midst of every situation for, for mountains and strongholds to come down. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for every breakthrough and every blessing that is coming our way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Uh, now it's time for announcement. All right. Uh, so the first announcement is our Soak Living Room. This is what you're watching right now, Soak Living Room. And because uh, tonight is the last session of uh, operate activating in uh, the Power Gift, all right, uh, well, we're going to start a new series next month because next month is the month of March and our new series is called uh, Engaging Heaven Building Communities. All right. So I, I think our heart is to uh, share with us, you know, how we replicate what we do. And I think one, one thing we need to know that the supernatural needs a container, you know, and, and we call that container community because no one is supposed to heal the sick alone. No one is supposed to grow alone. No, no one is supposed to run alone. And, and we all know that there's the importance of a prophetic community, of a healing community, you know, a community where, where they all support one another. You know, like for me, I, I really thrive and grow in the supernatural because of the community that I have. You know, and, 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 and I, I, I say at the bottom of my heart, like I really am thankful for, you know, Jeff and Patrick that in my early days, they not only uh, set an example for me, but really, you know, show me the ropes. And I, I personally is, is a receiver of what a community can do. And even when I was in uh, Battle School of Supernatural Ministry, it is also that community that really helped me to accelerate in the supernatural. So we're going to talk more about how we can engage heaven, but at the same time, building this community that will have exponential growth in the supernatural manifestation of God. Amen? All right. Mm. So that will be um, next month. Okay. And um, the second announcement uh, is this Saturday, we are having our Saturday service, all right? Our usual Saturday service is uh, happening at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live, all right? And we are on the sermon topic of living, living life without limitation, all right? So that will be also uh, the last one, all right? Because next month, we have a new topic. We we'll announce a new topic uh, this Saturday. But this month, we are going to finish up the sermon topic on, you know, living life without limitation. And, you know, we, 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 we really want to live life without limitation. And I feel like tonight's lesson is kind of like a preview of what living life without limitation looks like. 
you shall have endless potential. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't. Uh, yeah, I should have let you hijack. The joke's so old already. Like, don't know how many times you use it. You cannot why recycle one. No? Why did you like to cut in my announcement? Yeah. All right. <laughs> anyway, that that is the second announcement. Uh, the third announcement will be our event bright. And also for those of you who are aware, uh, we have opened up our physical service for people to attend in person. But it is kept to a small partic participant group because of the COVID regulation um, that we need to comply with the government. All right. So with that, you know, uh, to, to, to be part of our uh, service, which is also a live recording, all right, you need to get an Eventbrite ticket. And right now, uh, we're going to put up the Eventbrite ticket for, for people. So you, if you want to attend our service this uh, Saturday, you know, just go to the, um, the code, you know, the website that we are flashing up below me right now. You see, below me. All right, and there's a password to key in the password, all right, and get a ticket. So each, every person that show up needs a ticket. So, so far, thankfully, no one show up without a ticket. You know, but I don't want to jinx it, but so I do, do want to say, you know, if you do not have the ticket, please do not show up at our um, live recording um, service because uh, we cannot admit you in due to the regulation. All right, so you want to make sure that when you sign up, you get an email and the email will have a QR code for you to, to, to sign in when you're here. All right, so I think that's all for now. I think the last one we do want to also start to share is that um, I know we've been sharing a little bit on that, but we are looking to start and move our Saturday service to a Sunday service. And this is also in alignment to, you know, uh, what the Lord has impressed on our hearts.